lots of questions about Tom McGee this week. Of course, uh, that match finally aired on the WWE network recently. Uh, what can you tell us about Tom McGee that you remember? You know, I remember Tom, I came in 1987 and I remember Tom from time to time doing dark matches at television tapings. And if you put Tom with somebody that could work, Tom looked okay. And if you put Tom with somebody that couldn't work or an enhancement talent, uh, neither one knew what the hell to do. So Tom McGee was an extremely strong human being with, uh, gifted with incredible athletic skills, but less than zero charisma. And it was, you would see sparks of brilliance where you go, Oh my God, look at that. And then, Oh my God, look at that. So he ran the gambit next up. Mr. McCall wants to know in James Dixon's book, Titan shattered. He talked about how macho man was on the cusp of coming back to WWF in 1996. Was there any truth to this? I've never heard this story anywhere else. Yes, there was Randy and I talked and we had gone back and forth on a contract and it fell apart. Just, I think it was too far apart on money. We were far apart on money and dates. You know, at that time, Vince wasn't big on limited number of dates for talent. You're either under contract or you're not. And Randy wanted so many dates. It, it just, it just got crossways at some point. And I'm the one that had to deliver the message. Got another question here about macho man. This time it involved is easy for me to say it involves his match with uh, Bret Hart from November of 97. Uh, some would say the best match in Saturday night main event history. Is it true that on the heels of that match, both guys requested the opportunity to work a feud together? Hmm. I could see Randy always saying, you know, brother, I think, uh, I could get him over and do something for him, help him out there. Uh, huh. And who the hell wouldn't want to work with Randy Savage. So that wouldn't surprise me at all, but anything significant. No, not that I can remember. Uh, Jeremy wants to know, was the idea of the winner of the Royal rumble receiving a title match ever discussed before Royal rumble 93? No. Not to my knowledge. Uh, obviously, they, they did the one with Ric Flair for the vacated title, but um, I'm the one that made the big fight for it with Yoko. Quick question about, uh, or from Jason Bayless. When Rick Rude went behind WWE's back and negotiated a new deal with WCW over the phone the night of the screw job in Montreal, how was that viewed by Vince? Because the rumor was. Uh, He was figured in through the plans for WWE creative through the first of the year. Well, Rick was figured in with the whole DX deal, but at the same time, you know, we also had taken Rick out of obscurity where WCW wouldn't touch Rick. And the only thing that made Rick valuable to them at the time was he was on our television and he was available. So, and, and that's our bad for, ever allowing somebody to go on a week to week contract too. Chris wants to know when Andre turned babyface at WrestleMania six, was there any consideration for an on-air reconciliation between he and Hogan? Hmm. Not that was discussed. It would have been no. cool though. It would have been. Yeah, probably would have been. Chris wants to know, Sid appeared on Sean Mooney's podcast recently and stated that Hogan flipped out backstage after the 92 rumble because he was booed. If Bruce was there, would he have died on the hill to turn Hogan heel? And who does he think would have persuaded Vince? Well, I did not die. I wasn't there, but, uh, I had suggested turning Hogan heel many times and wasn't the hill I was going to die on. What can Bruce tell us about the flying nuns? (laughs) Oh man. Shotgun Saturday night. We had 
we were looking at different talent. We'd use the headbangers a couple times as enhancement talents on TV. Vince wanted crazy characters for Shotgun Saturday Night because it was New York and took a look at the headbangers and saw them as nuns. So we named them the Flying Nuns with Brother Love as their manager and the rest, as they say, is history. Thank God it only made its way to Shotgun Saturday Night and that that concept was scrapped fairly quickly. Uh, Black Rexcellence wants to know, why was Pat Patterson the referee for WrestleMania 11 main event with Bam Bam Bigelow and Lawrence Taylor? Because Lawrence was comfortable with Pat, and Pat had been with them from the very beginning, laying out the match and working with LT, and LT was comfortable with Pat being there. 